Hi, my name is Maria Höhn. I'm a professor of history in the Department of History. And I'm absolutely delighted that I was asked to participate in asking questions of the incoming class who read this novel, Exit West, uh, by Moshin Hamid. And I'm delighted to um, spend a little bit of time with you. I'm Matthew Brill Carlat. I graduated from Vassar in 2019. I was a history major. Um, and I also worked with Professor Hohn on the Consortium on Forced Migration, Displacement, and Education. Um, that consortium grew out of a student organization called Refugee Solidarity that Professor Hohn founded with some, ref with some uh, Vassar students in 2015. Um, so Vassar Refugee Solidarity has a variety of initiatives and programs to assist displaced populations uh, that included resettling families before the current presidential administration cut off nearly all refugee admissions to the United States. Um, also, I wanna alert you all that there, we have four planned exhibitions for fall 2020 that relate to migration and making home anew. So let me just also say a couple of words about the consortium. Uh, what we're working on is developing a minor or correlate as we call it at BASA in forced migration studies. And our commitments are really to help displaced students get access to Vassar, to learn with and from displaced populations, and finally to reverse the existing humanitarian aid hierarchies, right, that is always from the West to the non-Western countries. And this seems especially relevant to this theme of welcoming societies that we want to explore a little bit with you um, in our presentation. So let's talk about welcoming societies. And what we were thinking about, Matt and I, as we were reading this novel and thinking about questions for you is that what we really have here are two experiments, London and Marin County in California. And Exit West, the author presents sort of exaggerated fictional modes of two examples of refugee resettlement and integration in the Western world. London, England and its suburbs and Marine County in California. Hamid seems to be digging into two modes of approaching resettlements in the West. The state-driven arrangements that we find in London and the laissez-faire community-based, less structured shantytown settlement in California that suggests that people should pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Very American theme, of course. In terms of refugee resettlement, the reception of forcibly displaced individuals in European countries tends to be shaped by state intervention based on existing models of the social welfare state. Hamid's description of London resembles what happened in socialist states like the former German Democratic Republic, as some of you know as East Germany, or the Soviet Union, or in Cuba in previous decades, when housing shortages prompted governments to arrange brigades of workers to build massive housing blocks in exchange for the right to live in one of those new units. After World War II, a European welfare state made generous provisions for their citizens to forestall popular revolt and prevent the emergence of communism or the resurgence of fascism, right? So this is the reason why you have that welfare state in Europe, because of this threat of fascism or communism re-emerging. So in that vein, the London model that we were reading about here in Hamid's novel is overwhelmingly focused on fulfilling humans' most basic needs, food, water, shelter but it is perhaps less well equipped to foster a sense of belonging, foster a sense of home. It is certainly no utopia. The installation of refugee housing in London's inner, inner, inner ring suburbs and former Tony suburban neighborhoods bespeaks a public policy that bows to nativist pressure. More of an attempt to remove the refugees from sight, so to speak, and stabilize the country than a genuine effort to welcome new arrivals into all levels and aspects of the society's life. So in contrast, California seems like a place where Nadia and Saeed can try their luck. They can sort of build themselves up while they rekindle their romantic relationship, which has sort of faltered. The basic needs of survival can be harder to come by in California than in London, but for a while, it seems that Saeed and Nadia are content to adapt to the system where access to food and other resources is guaranteed, not by the state, but by one's relationships with other perhaps marginalized groups of people in one's community or members of a co-op that positions itself in opposition to capitalism. But as in London, so in Marin County, there are signs that this setup is not the ideal of bottom-up democracy that it might appear. Um, the carcass of the drone that falls out of the sky 
on their lean-to certainly signals that the settlement might be free from state-provided resources, uh, but certainly not from its surveillance. Uh, so this calls to mind, I think, the, the use of the U.S. military uh, using drones and helicopters to scatter and clear protesters in Lafayette Square in D.C. earlier this summer. Um, the tensions also uh, in California over who counts as quote-unquote native um, signal that Nadia and Said's presence might be just as precarious there as in London. Their presence might be just as predicated on the state building up physical and economic walls between, on the one hand, settlements for new arrivals and others on society's margins, and on the other hand, um, areas reserved by a white-led government for a white-dominated society. Mm -hmm. So having sort of thought about these two models now that we're giving to you, we would like for you to sort of pick one of these two questions and we would love to hear your responses. So the one I would like to ask you is this, are the arrangements in Marin County and London democratic? Is the idea of democracy even useful or relevant here? What other ideas or words might we use to describe both what happens in Marin County and London and also what we might wish to see in its place, right? So you tell us what, what we see, but also what would be another option, another possibility that you could think of. And what I would really like to ask is, what is owed to people who have been displaced from their homes? Um, and who is responsible for making sure that what is owed is eventually paid? Is it the state? Is it the communities that displaced people arrive in? Is it other people entirely? Some combination of those. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I, I want, I'd like perhaps you to think about the, the promise of 40 square meters and a pipe in London um, and how that evokes the 40, 40 acres and a mule promised but not delivered to free African Americans after the Civil War, after the end of slavery. Mm -hmm. um, and to think about what, what does the pipe in London um, instead of the mule stand in for today. So obviously, you know, you know this question, this idea is re referring to a specific period in U.S. history, but perhaps we can think in a more global sense about it as well. And I just met, uh, I, if it's okay with you, I would like to remind the students again that we have these amazing exhibitions planned in the fall, and one is um, from photographs of items taken away from uh, migrants coming from Central America and Mexico. Um, items taken away when they were in ICE detention camps. Another one is an exhibition of children's art that was produced in detention camps. Um, and somebody photographed that. And a third exhibition that we're doing together between the consortium and um, Lazar Refugee Solidarity um, is one that uh, has um, items that refugees from Iraq and, um, and Afghanistan brought to the United States and they're talking a photo photographer photograph those and people talk about what they mean to them and how they connect them to their homeland. And a fourth exhibition is going to be in the Loeb, which is a retablo exhibition. These are um, pieces of things that migrants have made uh, after a successful journey to their new home. And so when you come back, having read this wonderful novel by Hamid and having thought about it for the summer and then perhaps engage with some of this amazing artwork we're bringing to the campus. So we're very, very excited you're coming and we're looking forward to continuing this conversation with you. Bye. <clears throat>